This video covers the processor configuration available in Hyper-V. So if I look at a regular virtual machine, I can assign a number of virtual processors. So if the VM is running, I cannot change the number of virtual props. So this is a single processor virtual machine. And then what I can do is I can reserve an amount of resource for this virtual machine. So I could say, for example, always make sure at least 25% of a single processor core is reserved to this VM. And its limit, it can actually use up to 100% of those processors. Or I could say, we well, don't reserve any, but I only want it to be able to use 50%. And notice what it's showing me in this total system resource is what amount is that of the overall system resource of the box. So this is a single processor and it's saying it's 6% because this box effectively has 16 processors. So I go to my performance and look at CPU. You can see it's got 16 logical processors. So one processor of 16 is 6%. Now one nice thing I could actually do is I can actually change these limits while the virtual machine is running, as you can see. So suppose, so while I can't add processors to a running virtual machine, one thing I could do is let's say, for example, for this virtual machine, I wanted it to only have two processors normally. But there could be this extreme scenario where if I get permission, it can access four. So I could just give it four virtual processors because there's no real disadvantage in Hyper-V because it doesn't use gang scheduling on the processor. There's no disadvantage to giving it more virtual processors. But what I can say here is normally four would be 25% of the system's resources. But I can say, look, I'm gonna actually limit that to 50%. So effectively now it's getting two cores worth of processing. And that's all it would be allowed to use. And then if it's a busy time and I want to allow it to effectively hot add some additional resource, I could increase that limit to maybe three cores worth or access all four. So those I can actually change. This relative weight is really used in times of contention. So suppose I have too many virtual machines and there's just not enough processing resource available. The relative weight really controls how much CPU time I get compared to other virtual machines. So if I have a relative weight of 100 and another virtual machine, for example, had a relative weight of 200, what that says is the one with 200 will get twice as many CPU cycles as the one with 100. So it's just letting me balance who's more important than others. And that's really it. And so if I look at this virtual machine, you can see a CPU usage is 4%. But what's important is within that VM, you can actually see it's running at 85, 86% right now. It's running a malware scan. And so what you see in Hyper-V is this percentage is not how busy that CPU is in terms of its available processor resource. This isn't 4% of what it has. This is 4% of the overall system's resources. So if you remember, this VM actually only had a single proc. So a single proc could only be 6% at max. So when we see it's running at one or two or 3%, that means its internal proc is running at maybe 50 or 60%. So it's at zero or one. If we look at it, it's actually running at 17, 20%. So just realize when you're looking at the Hyper-V view, it's not saying, well, that process is doing nothing. That's of your total system resources. And that concludes the basic overview of the processor configuration.